you've certainly got to be mentally quite strong to survive in recruitment. Um, Do you get trust issues out of that? If you, if you didn't have trust <laughs> issues going into recruitment, you'll have trust issues, <laughs> issues going out. So, I, you know, jokingly, I mean, I always say, you know, a great recruiter is probably someone, this is going to sound bad, but <laughs> if you can find someone that's got trust issues, is impatient and a bit of a control freak, you're probably looking at a good recruiter. Man, wow. Because, um, you know, you need the, the, the impatience, you need that urgency. It's, ultimately, it is a sales job. So yeah. if you're not able to drive urgency and commitment in a timely fashion, you know, time kills deals. And then the trust thing, I suppose, you're going to be like, all right, you're going to be there, you know, you're going to be there at the interview. Or if you've got a temp worker, you know, are you going to be starting like there on Monday, like, you good, you got this, yeah. you, you know? And, you know, and then, and then the control freak, what I mean by that is someone that can actually control that process, you know, be an expert, consult. <laughs>
what is this? Like, what do you guys do? Like, what, what does a recruitment consultant do? And she's like, oh, and they, yeah, so explained it. And I was like, come in. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. So I had an interview and then had a second interview and yeah, got the job. And that was, that was it, really. Was there um, some, was there some challenges along the way? Speed bumps? You talk to someone, they promise you the world and they don't even, they oh, disappear still, into you Africa. St- you still get that to this day. You yeah. know, people go cold on your clients, you know, they say, oh, we need this. We need, you know, we've got all these requirements. And then you, yeah, you actually know, go away and you find them and then they're like, oh, you know, something's, you know, project might have slowed down or, or whatever. So, um, I guess what's different about recruitment than selling, you know, a widget, um, it's, you know, um, people is your product. So, yeah, naturally with that, you are going to get let down from time to time. <laughs> yeah, you've got any reference? Um, you've got, you've got to be, um, yeah, you, you, you've certainly got to be mentally quite strong. Okay. To survive in recruitment. Do you um, get trust issues out of there? Um, if you, if you didn't have trust <laughs> issues going into recruitment, you'll have trust issues, <laughs> <laughs> issues going out. Jeez, um, man. So I, you know, jokingly, I mean, I always say, you know, a, a, a great recruiter is probably someone. Um, this is going to sound bad, but <laughs> if you can find someone that's got uh, trust issues, is impatient, um, and a bit of a control freak, you're probably looking at a good recruiter. Brand, wow. Um, is is because um, you know you need the, the the impatience, you need that urgency. It's, ultimately, it is a sales job. So yeah. if you're not able to drive urgency. Um, and commitment in a timely fashion, you know, time kills deals. Um, and then the trust thing, I suppose, you've got to be like, all right, you're going to be there, you know, you're going to be there at the end of year, or if you've got a temp worker, you know, are you going to be starting, like, there on Monday, like, you're good, you got this, yeah. you, you know? And, um, and you know, and then and then the control freak, what I mean by that is someone that can actually control that process, you know, be an expert, consult. Um, okay. You, you know what I mean? Like, um, that sounds like an intense office. You've got a whole lot of control fix and patient with trust issues. <laughs> it's not quite that bad. It's, I've probably I've probably painted a pretty bad picture, but um, uh, but it, it's one of those things about yeah, you know, controlling that process, being an expert. So you go to the doctor, and it's like you know you don't say like oh you know should we have these pills like like you know, you know the doctor doesn't sit there and say to you oh you know should should we have some pills or should we do surgery like what do you think you know yeah. he's like, I'm the doctor, and that's the same when we're doing recruitment. You know, a client calls us in, it's like you know we actually. We do this every day. Okay. You know, we know how the recruitment works. We know how to market. We know, you know, so it's... Ah, so do you have a bit of feedback from odd, the odd client maybe or just in your prior role where they'd say, oh, this is how we want you to do it. This is what you should do. And you kind of had to reel that back. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So so the typical thing might be, you know, someone rings up and says, you know, I want to coin a surveyor. It's like send CVs. And I was like, well, hang on. Let's rewind here. You know, let's sit down, talk about the role, your team, your culture, mm. how much you wanting to pay. Is that, you know... Is what you want? Is your budget realistic? They might have to re, you know, revise their budget. Um, How do you have those tough conversations? Is it like a oh, get, like or train someone to have those? Um, I think I think it's one of those ones where you can um, you just gotta you know a, a, like if a client's not meeting the market in terms of salary or well, it's or like do you first, just mean negotiating in general with numbers and? Well, it's more, it's like you, it's a combative conversation for someone to say, do it like this. And you're like, actually, let's rewind and mm. let's go back and navigate it. Either that or also, um, you've got. That, yeah, that yeah, does come with time. Okay. You know, you like time in terms of, um, being in the game, having done it, you know, and actually know that you, you know, knowing your, um, you know, what works and what doesn't mm. from that recruitment point of view. But it, it is a little bit harder when you start. You know, you're quite keen. You know, you, I remember mean, you, get, you get your first job. Someone will ring up and they'll be like, oh, you know, we're looking for, for this. And you're like, okay. And then you run off and like grab a bunch of CVs and stuff. And you're like, you know, when you should be like, you know, go through that client's wish list and then, you know, work out what's important so you can actually do a better job of the matching. Okay. Makes um, sense. And that, and that's the mark of a good recruiter. I think it's not necessarily how much you bill, although it is a commercial environment and we have bills to pay, but it's more, uh, what their, um, what that retention rate is. So we might have, so you might have one recruiter that does 10 placements and nine stick. You might have another recruiter that does 10 placements and four of them fall out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you're like, what, what are you doing or what are you not doing or what are you not noticing? Um, and that's where I think we've done quite well at links is our ratio of um, uh, the, the the placements to the ones that stick. It's, it seems really high. So how do you increase that ratio? Is it you go more in depth, you're better at the wish list? What do you think that point of difference is? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's just taking that time and being patient and getting the right person. 
as opposed and patiently patient uh, yeah <laughs> so, uh, yeah up. and to in terms of like rather than just trying to i guess ram a candidate you know into a company um you know actually getting the right candidate and what you know and some I'm, i mean there's many times where i've been like someone's interviewing a candidate they're like look we want to hire this one and i've sometimes i've been like you're sure <laughs> and they're like yep i was like okay <laughs> so you're, you're cool like i mean um and sometimes they go ahead and it, and it hasn't worked out for whatever reason sometimes you just get a bad feeling and it's one of those ones you can't put it in can't put it in words yeah you know it's that it's that people piece you're like oh i don't know if that's going to be a good placement like yeah i've seen that company i i, I feel like i have a, a reasonable understanding of their culture like i don't know if that person's gonna integrate too well oh, okay um so there's all that too, instead of just doing the job. So intuitive as well. It's like instincts built from experience, really. Yeah, and that's and that's the interesting thing about recruitment. It attracts a lot of people, people, but there is a a commercial element to it as well. Mm. Which so there's that dichotomy there, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and that's where I think a lot of people struggle with it. You know, they maybe came in because they wanted to help people and work with people, and then they realise that there's this big scary commercial monster that needs feeding as well. Mm. Um, so it's hard to find people that can that can balance that. What makes it a monster? Is it the bureaucracy? Is it the thinking money, thinking strategically? Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, we charge a fee for what we do, mm. which clients pay, I guess, somewhat begrudgingly yeah, a lot of, of the time. That's um, and that's that's just business, right? I mean, it's yeah. the same. Yeah, I guess the shoe's on the other foot now. You know, I pay my accountant or I pay a lawyer. Yeah, lawyers are the worst because, you know, you're like... Oh, man, hundred like, grand later. You're just like paying money um, and like you don't get anything from it. <laughs> At least with the accountants, I suppose, you get, you know, your your balances are all done and, um, you know, your GST is all paid and, you know, it's all... It's all mm. Yeah, there's something there. Whereas the lawyer one, it's like, oh, you know, we're just paying for paperwork. Um, <laughs> and, and nothing's even guaranteed. Uh, and I was like, so if we, if, we, if we spend this money and we get these contracts and then for whatever reason it doesn't work, like... Do I get my money back? And he's like, "Oh no, it's not how it works." So, yeah, um, <laughs> it sounds like you're talking from experience. A few challenges with paperwork. Yeah, oh, having I've, to pay for it. I've always struggled a little bit on the process part of business. Yeah, having systems and procedures. Um, that's probably why I guess I started the business in the first place is because I was Tired. just wanted to go out and a bit more of a probably a bit of a free spirit, I suppose. Like. Hated having to do all the paperwork and yeah. you know put everything in the system and the CRM. Whereas now that I own the business, I understand why that, <laughs> why that all exists. Makes sense. Did you have um, to balance yourself with someone else that thinks differently, or you just had to suck it up, or how? When you, like, like to, when I started. Well, no. So you go into business and you're mm. this free spirit that doesn't want to do all the process stuff. Yeah. But you need to. Yeah. How did you navigate that? Hire someone? Well, we're or? still yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So get people uh, around you that um, that are into it. Um, so I guess, yeah, for us, we're still sort of working through that in the business, getting all the systems and procedures, um, a bit more smooth. I guess I'd, I don't want to over, over complicate it either. I think one of the good things about a business is the guys can operate how they want. You know, they don't have, um, you know, sort of KPIs for the sake of KPIs. Mm. You know, it's like we have a target, we have a goal that we're going for, but how you get there doesn't matter too much. Okay. But I think for us, it's more just been recording. Yeah, you know, recording the activity and yeah, you know, so we've got a sort of historic data there around you know our clients and our candidates that we're talking with. Okay. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, I got someone in to help me with that, All right, um, which has been good. So, do you have combative conversations? I imagine the two because the this archetype, the lady we've just had on, Ellie, um, she was talking about how there's different archetypes, how yep. people want to communicate in a different way, and blah blah. blah. Yep. One's very processed. This is the bottom line. Yeah, but the other ones want to be free spirit. This is yep. the idea. This is what I think. How to- yeah, exactly. Well, and then, well, it's 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 having. Well, for me, it's a constant internal battle on that one. Yeah. Um, um, trying to get the, because I guess the yeah, like when you're running a business, particularly a small business, you know, like the business isn't going to outpace the, the leader. So I've got to be doing it all. Mm. So I'm having yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, I guess, where you just got to make sure that you're doing it. Following the process, mm. getting everything. It's it's not a lot to do, to be fair, like yeah. with, with the game that we're in. Um, so it feels like a lot, though, when you're doing it, though. Or you feel like you have to do it and you don't want to do it and you put in the too hard box. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think, you know, the ultimate thing is to make recruitment placements. Do you know what I mean? So when you're in that moment and you're on the phone and then someone else calls and, you know, you just you sort of put all that to the side. Mm. And, yeah, you know, then you've got to go meet someone 
or whatever. So, do you know what I mean? So, you, you know, when you're really going and, you, and you're moving at pace, it is hard to stop, like slow down and, um, yeah, yeah get everything. Put in the so thing. you must have like a weekend or something that you have to sit down or an evening. Yep. Sit, oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Putting yeah. In the graft, huh? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think, you know, with having your own business, there is yeah, a lot of out of hours stuff. Mm. Um, I remember when I first started, it was pretty much seven days a week for, for six months. Yeah. Um, just into it, you know, um, do film some content on Sundays. Um, <laughs> you know, it was, but it was good. I think, yeah, if you're, if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're passionate about it, it doesn't really, you don't really notice it. So the same, really did you care. have to have a flip though? Cause I, I feel on that, like, um, I, I'm not running my own business yet, but I, I work as though it is cause mm. I want to buy it. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm putting in that graft, but then I slowly didn't manage the, um, the, the balance aspect. So I yep. started putting on weight. I yep. started not interacting with friends yep. as much. Did you have a flip or are you still in that head down? Yeah, it's yeah, it's an interesting one. Um because you do get to that point where you bur- start burning out. Mm. Um and like I was and just before COVID I was I had my mate's wedding over in Noosa mm. and like I had a couple of weeks booked. I was gonna fly over. I think it was I think it was uh, it was May it was gonna be. Oh. Um and had all, all the and that was gonna be my first holiday after sort of eighteen months. Yeah, you know, we had just finished the financial year. Well, it would have been March. Yeah, you know, we were just wrapped up. It was a pretty successful first full year in business. And yeah, I was gonna have a little holiday and mm. um, you know, and, and all the rest of it. And then a boom, COVID hit, and it's like just wiped all that off the map basically. And then we're like back into it. So it has been exhausting. Yeah, from that point of view. So. These days, I probably maybe not seven days anymore, but um, I know I, I tend to sort of start my week maybe like Sunday, yeah, okay. um, and then by Thursday I'm sort of ready for beers. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. And then yeah, sort yeah. of Friday, Saturday, probably a bit more me time, I guess, and then okay. Sunday, and then I guess my thought process. Then I'm always a day ahead. Fair. Do you have like a structure? Is like Sunday more strategic or catching up and paperwork? This is yeah, get clear the clear the inbox. Okay. Look at what look you know look at what's coming up for the week. You know, what, what, what needs to be focused on. Um, what would be your advice as young people about to go through what you've been through? You know, like you're looking to start a business or they're just in the yeah. throes of it. Oh, I think if, you, if you're thinking of starting a business, then do it. Um, <laughs> okay. Just get into it. Um, even if you fail, you're going to learn so much. Mm. Um, they have such a better appreciation for, um, I guess, the people that have succeeded in business, for one, and then... You know, the people who are employers as well, you know, there's a lot of risk, you know, uh, employing someone's one of the most dangerous things you can do mm. in, in this country. Mm. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I think, it, you know, it certainly gives people a better understanding of that, you know, what it takes to actually get a business making profit. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I, and the biggest thing is, you know, don't be, you, I think you've got to go all in too, you know, you see yeah. a lot of people do side hustles and it's like, I don't know, like if you like save some money and just fucking go for it, you know. Yeah. Don't like don't do um, you know, like don't half ass it. Yeah, true. Um, because then you're gonna be doing a shit job of that, and you're gonna be a shit job of your real job. Like just get into it. True. Yeah. Um, Multitasking. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, and just just and 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 take the risk. Business is taking risks. Mm. So, um, you know, so that 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 that's all I would say. Yeah. It's just what would you pick a goal, different? pick a mountain, and go climb it? You know. All right. Fair. Yeah. What, what would you do differently now that you know what you know? I would spend more time on the systems and processes ah, up front. Yeah. I'd get that done before I started hiring and growing and all the rest of it. Okay. And then there's a more of a system that they can, you know, or like there's an organized structured environment that they can come into, yeah. um, which which people like. So I never liked it, yeah. but it turns out that I've learned now that people actually really like systems and structures and somewhere to be and what time and how many calls you're supposed to make whereas I hated all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, the, the type of personality it takes to start a business is very different to the type that it takes to run a business. Uh. Um, I think time again, maybe I would have looked at um, a business, like maybe going in with somebody else. Partnered. Um, partnered. Like, someone like who experienced or? Yeah, well, well, yeah, definitely someone who just had the opposite skill set to me. Uh. Yeah, you know, the system side and the yeah. and and all that. Um, I think would have I think that would have been good, as opposed to, I think in the long run I'll be glad I went it myself. But mm. I think probably yeah, you know, with someone else there might have got, but you know would have would have had a better foundation 
fast. And then you got someone to share the share the risk with, because um, it, it you know it, it's pretty lonely out there when you when yeah. you're going it yourself. So that's probably something I may may have looked to do. Um, I would have done differently. Um, it's hard to look back and oh, there's heaps of stuff like there's heaps of moments and things that you would have done differently. Mm. But then at the end of the day, like yeah, you know, the mistakes are where the experience comes from, and so it's like. You just gotta, you just gotta go with it, eh? Yeah, well, uh, you're definitely you're just, going with it. You're just feeling it as you go. Um, what else would I say? Like, I, I hide really quickly. I thought that was a good move. Like, I got someone in to help me with the admin stuff just 20 hours a week. Like, that was like the first thing I did, like week two. Did you have a client um, then, or were you just putting it out of pocket? I, I had some startup capital. Okay. Um, so, oh, what is that? So I started with 35 grand. Yeah. Um, and then, so that was in, I think I started in like October. And then February, I think I got to as low as two grand. Oh, yeah. So I probably, yeah. And then, and then, so then everything started to like pick up steam again and, and away she went. Um, uh, but yeah, it was a bit hairy there for a moment because I had a house down in Christchurch that was empty with no tenant. Um, <laughs> my flatmate had moved out. So I was paying like double rent. So I was, yeah, we were bullshit. Yeah. Tense. A couple of credits cards maxed out. So we were, uh, we were into it. And you, you um, were renting the premises too at that stage or yeah, you, you had a lease. Oh, it was like a month by month lease down at Vic Park. Oh, okay. So it was just, um, you just paid monthly. It, okay. it wasn't, it was under F45 in Vic Park. Oh, okay. And there's a, there was an old exposed pipe, um, <laughs> where the, the toilet was. So every time someone on F45 would, um, would go to the toilet, they'd go, oh, yeah. And like, wash past my head. Um, <laughs> I had to distract like, the oh, like when you're on the phone to a client, it's like someone's bloody F45 flying past. It's, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and and then they do the um those those sandbag things, you know, that stomp, yeah. You know, so they didn't oh. tell, they didn't they didn't mention that when I moved in. Um, <laughs> Subsequently so, moved out. Then yeah, we got out when, there pretty quick. Um, yeah. and then you had I think it was like Tom Tom and Lizefra above it, so the bars. So I'd go in and work on Sunday. Yeah, and you hear everyone upstairs pissing up, like you know, the music playing and everything. <laughs> so you're like, oh, we good to have a beer. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, then then we got the spot up at College Hill now, which is which is which is great. Yeah, no, I've been there. Nice. Yes. You sort of turned um, sort of a house into a, a commercial sort of setup. Yeah, it's quite slick, a... I would say. Yeah, I with. think I think it's got some history. That house. I think for a while it was like a recording studio. I think it's called Brown Street Studios or something like oh, that. Yeah? Um, oh, yeah. So you didn't put up um, the the silence things because uh, you no, had a... no, that was already there. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I was gonna th- you're, you're all in, mate. So I no, that. no, it was just that was just that was yeah, just that was just. I mean, you got to have a podcast. Having, yeah, I know. Um, that just happened to be there, so that was cool. But um, I think there was a house for a while, and then and then some, and then a couple bought it, um, and that's when I moved in. Okay. So yeah, as a commercial, as a commercial lease, I suppose, which All is right. good. Nice. Well, so we've talked about sort of your journey and how you've had to overcome things, but what about from the recruitment standpoint? What are the mistakes you see um, from trying to in-house recruit as opposed to outsource? Um. So. A lot of it comes down to, you know, the business, the size, the, the company, the budget, mm. whatever. Um, I think, you know, I think for me, the most important thing has always been if like marketing the role, where you're marketing it, how that looks, and your employment brand is really important. Like, you know, your website and all the rest of it, um, has a big impact on the, on the, type of candidate you can get mm. so i remember you know we had a we had a guy he's like, oh you know i'm looking for like a junior qs you know like a you know young guy like fit the culture and all the rest of it so yeah that's cool um i was like, like what's your website and he's like, don't have a website yeah. <laughs> i was like we actually built him one on wix oh, yeah, did you? yeah yeah, yeah so one. just so because i was like we need to have something uh, like, oh, i don't want a website Not, nothing good comes from a website so um so it's having so I think, you know, I think there's a couple of things you got to A, work out what the hell you want mm. and then B, work out how you're going to go get it. And then C, have a, probably have a process there. It depends like our process now is I meet them. Then maybe, um, uh, one, like me, maybe a couple of guys on the team might meet them and then we go next door for a drink. That's the third interview. Ah, the drink. Yeah. That, what so was that behind it? Yeah. What was behind Getting them. And it doesn't have to be a drink. It could be coffee. It depends yeah, on your yeah. culture. Um, but that's, I think that's, and that's a telling moment. We've had guys that have got to that point and for whatever reason, it's just, we're like, no. Nah. Um, and you get them in a different environment. You see what they're like with the bar staff. Mm. Um, you know, if you're standing up around a, around a table, it's just, I don't, it's very, 
the, the, the issue with recruitment is people have two face to face meetings for like 40 minutes and then they go into a, man, a marriage, you know? Yeah. It's like getting married after a speed date. Um, <laughs> speed dating or whatever. It's uh, pretty crazy. You know, when you think about that, it's nuts. True. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, I'd say take your time with it, get it right. Um, and that's, that's typically half the, half the issue. A lot of people will hire from a reactionary point of view. Like they're like, you know, shit, we got real busy now. Like we need someone like, mm. and they're like, yeah, we can, like we need someone like start Monday. I was like, well, anyone good's got four weeks notice, you know, cause they're in a job, you know, the best candidates obviously Have in a job, job working. Uh, okay. Um, oh, occasionally don't get me wrong. There's some great people out there that are available now, but it's rare to, yeah. You know, have, have, particularly if you're in a job that requires a certain skill set. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that, you know, they rush it, don't take the time. And I've made all these mistakes too. Mm. Um, and which has led us to that sort of process that we got now. Which is good. You also, you had an interesting insight about when people, I remember in your speech, you said in a job interview, if they're good at it, it's actually more of a red flag than a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So people always, you know, they're all, you know, um, this person interviewed really well. You know, we'd like to hire them. I was like, okay. Like, it's like, well, their job's not actually going to be interviewing. Yeah. You know, like their job's going to be quantity surveying yeah. or accounting. Yeah. And nine times out, you know, these are, these are, um, you know, jobs say that may, might not require a large amount of interpersonal connectivity. Yeah. yeah. So to speak. Um, but you, you're like looking for the one that interviews the best. You know, and, and there's no correlation between people you like and top performers. Mm. So it's, it's having that, um, mindset too, I suppose, as well is, is really important. How do you, um, how do you recognize a high performer versus someone you like? Like, what do you sort of look for? Do you say, here's some numbers, turn well, this into. Yeah, well, I think it depends on the job, right? Cause I think people have always thought, oh, you know, the best sales people, you know, obviously people, people like real bright, real buzzy, all the rest of it. But it's the, it's the ones that are numbers driven and process driven who probably end up doing the, the, you know, the bigger numbers. Yeah. Consistent, I would say. You know, yeah. cause I always remember when a sales career, you know, you meet top real estate agents or, you know, you go in a car yard, you know, you meet the top sales person, like very often, um, no one likes them. Um, <laughs> yeah, they push it. You, you know what I mean? Like they're Challenges. not, they're not sometimes, you know, very, very, you know, very often they're on the spectrum a bit. Mm. Um, but that's, yeah, but. For whatever reason, you know, they're just, you know, they're good at their job. They remember all, all the detail. They know, you know, how to, how to get through the challenges and the objections and all the rest of it. Mm. And that's not always the person that interviews well. True. So, so that's why I always, you know, I think the interview is one thing, but you've got to be able to look at what's the job, what's their skill set like. Um, you know, rather than do you just like them? <laughs> yeah. No, there's um, easy box to tick, but not worthwhile because it costs a lot of money to, to bring someone in, train them. Lose them. Yeah, well, they say, um, yeah, like the cost of a bad hire, say, that doesn't work out. Yeah, it's, you know, um, it depends on what sort of salary you're paying in the first place, but it's, yeah, it's not cheap. Mm. Um, because you've had to, you've, had to, you know, you spent time on, it's just, it's probably the time waste that's happened. That's the biggest cost. Mm. You know, you've, you've trained them up, you, you know, uh, but you could have been training someone else that was going to stay or was going to work out. Um, and there's obviously, yeah, the wages is one thing, but it's like, that's the, that's the least of your worries with a bad hire. Yeah. I mean, mm. affect culture, people coming in and out. And one, one person can, um, change, you know, in a smaller team, one person can have a really big impact on that culture. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crucial. That's why I think having those beers, you know, with that final meeting or whatever, that's really good. That, that'll, that'll help tick that box. Yeah. Um, but then some companies don't really have much of a culture either. Um, and that's okay too. Some people just, you know, I met candidates, they're like, look, culture, whatever, that's all cool. But like, I just want to do my job and go home. Like, you know, seven to five thirty, whatever mm. on site, do the job, go home. Yeah. That's, Fair. And that's fine too. So, yeah. Do you look for certain things? Like when we would do recruitment, we try and find, um, what they're looking for in the role in terms of like other development, travel, um, pro- uh, yeah, they get money. Like what their motivations are. Yeah, and mm. then do you sort of tailor it based on what's actually the truth, and then what relates to them? And yeah, well, yeah. The- well, we might have a candidate come through, and they're like, you know they're wanting this, this, and this, but then they're wanting this sort of job, and it's like, well, that's not really coherent. Um, hmm. you, you know, like they they might they might want this and this, and you know, to so say that they're wanting, 
you know, they want to get paid well. Um, you know, they want career progression, but then they want to like travel next year or something. Or it's like, you know, someone's not going to invest a bunch of time in you, mm. you know, if you're going to travel or, or whatever. So, um, you know, I always ask people, you know, if you've got like, say you've got the, the, like the job itself, um, the culture and the money, like what are those three? Yeah. Mm. Out, out of those three, like what do you, you know, what, what do you hold most dear? I suppose. Um, it was hard to get all three right. Yeah. So really hard. Okay. Um, so, yes. So you pick a favorite. And yeah. Then and... and then, yeah, if you're a culture person, you know, we, we might have a bunch of clients. You know, these guys got awesome culture. Some, you know, um, they do really cool projects. Sometimes that those companies, sometimes often they won't pay the most mm. for whatever reason. The culture pays the least. The, cult, the, the guys of awesome culture, they don't always pay the best. So I think that's because they've got their good culture. They don't have to. Huh. Well, that's a, that's yeah. a good point. Then, yeah. So having a good culture. Well, they might look after them in other ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, they um, don't feel the need because, like in in selling, you people objection handled by decreasing the price without actually solving mm. the problem. So yes, that, that's yeah. sort of the sense with um, like you recruit someone, they come into the organization, they're part of the culture, mm. they're they're fulfilled in that sense, so they're not coming to you being like, I want to raise, I want to be this, yeah. blah blah. Yeah, they'll get looked at, uh, looked after in other ways. You know, it might just be bonuses or you know, everyone just feels part of something that's growing. Like yeah. that's a lot more important than just bottom line. And often the companies that have to pay the most, there's a reason for it. You know, like so often candidates will, you know, I'll, they'll be like, you know, I want this. You know, I want a good stable company, good culture. So, okay, we'll get them an interview, get them a job offer with say company A. And then they go meet with company B. And they're, oh, they're, they're going to call, their, their job title is better and the salary is better. And it's like quite a big jump and it's like, well, why do you think that is? Mm. You know, like you need to be a little bit of, you know, all that, all that's golden, you know? Um, so that's, that's something that, you know, people, I guess, need to be mindful of too. The ones that are having to pay a lot, there's normally a reason for it. You know, they have hmm. a high turnover. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, some of the bigger Aussie guys that come over and to the NZ market, like they pay a ton and people go there because they pay a lot more, but then they're just like, yeah, it's just a horrible working environment. Oh, right. Wow. Um, you know, it's a big, you know, political and mm. no one's making a call and everyone's just, you know, it's like Game of Thrones. Um, whereas, yeah, so there might be a company that doesn't quite pay as much or can't pay as much, but it's an awesome place to work. So, huh. so all right, well, let's flip it from the other perspective. There'll be a lot of people out there looking for work at the moment, especially mm-hmm. with COVID. Mm-hmm. What should they look for in terms of trying to find a good role or, um, even checking within themselves first, because you talked about people coming in and yep, I've, not yeah. So want. whether it's client looking for a, a staff member or a, a candidate wanting a job, I think yeah, they both need to just assess like right, what am I like, what I want, um, okay. you know, because a lot of time like people are looking for a job, say or like say more on the low level side, you know, they're just scared to gun their CV out everywhere. Um, so you want to you know get specific about you know where you're going to look, where you're going to be in five, ten years, or, or whatever. Mm. And then start, um, you know, start moving towards that that okay. direction. And you know, you want you got to specialize in something. Yeah. You know, like um, that's where most people go wrong. You know, you see people that have had a career of 20, 30, 20, 30 years, and they're on the they've been on the same salary for the last ten, and you're in the same position because they don't specialize. You know, they don't mm. have anything that makes them an expert or special. Um, so yeah, people need to be. You know, you'd be better off to start with this one specific thing, do that, be good at that, and then, you know, over time you can pivot or whatever. So okay. I would say, yeah, just be like, right, what am I going to be known for? Okay. You know, like, what am I going to be good at? Um, what am I good at? Yeah. Do stuff you're good at. Don't, like, <laughs> oh, well. you know what I mean? Like, it, it lost, yeah. your, your job life is going to be much easier if you're actually good at something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, like, you, you don't want to be in a company where, like, you might like the company, you might like the job, but you're shit at it. Yeah. And then that's not good for anyone. Um, Do you see there's a link between passion and being good at something? Like, they actually yeah, like it? Yeah, 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 totally. Well, if, well, if you're the best at something, even if it's, um, I don't know, cleaning cups, if you're, like, the best cup cleaner in New Zealand, yeah. like, you know, you're going to have... Um, yeah, there's going to be that awe about you, you know, and the other cup cleaner is going to look up to, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Even if, even if like, intrinsically you don't like it, just being the best at it, it's going to, going to, you know, um, and that gives you options too, right? If you're good at something, people will find out. Yeah. You know, so let, let's maybe not use that example. Let's like, like say like, um, you know, it, it could be anything, you know, you might be a, a builder, you know, if you, if you're a good builder yeah. and you get onto site, you, you 
you work hard, um, that's a good quality job, it's done on time, reliable. Mm. Um people trip over to, to hire you. you yeah, know? you're rare. Um and that's and it's particularly in Auckland, I think, you know, um the skill shortages are, you know, that big in in that trade side. Mm. You know, whether it be carpenters or electricians or whatever, like um to well the actual good ones, like reliable, turn up each day, can do the job. Um, like really hard to find. Yeah, so, okay. Um, yeah, I would just say to people that are looking, looking for, yeah, just pick something that you want to do and just be good at that. Fair. All right. Well, for all the people that um have companies that clean cups or someone that's uh really good at cleaning <laughs> cups and they want to find you and learn more about you, what was the what would you say? What's the best place to find? Yeah, you? just um uh linkscrimmon dot co dot nz um or just Peter Stewart on LinkedIn. Um, fairly active on there. Uh, with some content and some value adds from time to time. So. Sweet. And I'll, I'll put that in the description. And once again, the the only way that people are going to hear about us is if you give us a review. It can be honest. It can be one star. It can be whatever. <laughs> we can turn that one into five because we'll take on the feedback. But just send out the reviews. Uh, and also hit up nzaudioeditors.com and uh, we'll see if we can get Peter Peter Stewart on that podcast live too. But for yeah. now, uh, thanks for coming, mate. Yeah, cheers. Oh, we're we doing handshakes on yeah. camera yet? Yeah. Yeah. Political. Good, Thanks, good guys. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>